Jill asks, what is the difference between Viva Pulse and Viva Glint? Why do we need multiple tools and brands for survey solutions? But, but, so then we got to talk about Microsoft Forms too. Why not roll Fair. all of these under insights? Fair question. But so Viva Glint is seen to be more company wide. So think of HR, corporate wellness, employee wellness initiatives and all that from the top down. Uh, individual managers can get aggregated information, but it's much more from the top down, corporate goals, corporate initiatives, all that. Whereas Pulse is designed for managers, leads, team leads to be able to get feedback on very specific things to them and to get you know, the information directly from their team members. So Glint's going to be more corporate, more anonymous type information would then go to managers, whereas Pulse is manager to team, much more, much more closely connected from there. I, I think th based on a similar tool that already exists, if you think about the difference between project and planner, um, Glint and Pulse are very similar. So project is for large projects, it's got a lot of things you can do in it. Can it do task management? Yes, but is task management its primary purpose? Not really. Um, it's the same thing with Glint and Pulse, is that Glint is kind of that project of the survey world where it's got all that stuff you can do, it's got a lot of neat things, whereas Pulse is more like Planner and the fact that Planner is a very lightweight, small solution, you can spin it up quickly, you don't need a lot of overhead to do it. Um, Glint requires, and I put this in the notes, but Glint requires a lot of admin, administrator configuration and management at the top, like Joy said, to be able to make it run, whereas Pulse yeah. is designed as a self-serve, kind of lightweight, quick use Still solution. Now, the so I had a, a version of this question. Somebody asked the same question. I was down in Melbourne a couple of weeks ago, uh, uh, also about, well, why would I use either of these things if we've got like Microsoft Forms and other third party external huge survey solutions? I said, well, these have our specific purpose tools and they, it is within the enterprise. Where a Microsoft Form, you could do it within the enterprise, but you could also do it externally. But that's, mm -hmm. it's just, it, Microsoft often, we often say this, you know, creates tools and solutions that have some overlap there. And their answer to that is use the one that fits that scenario that makes sense for what you're trying to accomplish because it's, it, it's not black and white, these fixed sets of, of, of you know, these scenarios. Um, but I, it's interesting too, the other half of, the, of Jill's question is, on the roll it under insights like from a branding like you've got the data collection that you get data out of the glint activities and out of the pulse activities and you've got all the insights which are the team and organizational data points and all things around there and and you know why do we have all these silos of data that are kind of trying to do some similar things um, around insights and that's what I don't have them memorized, but you know, the buckets of the Microsoft Viva, you've got like the four different areas and Glint and Pulse be different next week. fit under the same bucket as Insight. Sorry, Al, what'd you say? I said they'll be different next week. There's a chance. Yeah, yeah. But While I- While you were I, there, did you take down a footy match? I, I, I was down there working, Hal, come on. Oh, you didn't get in a footy match? No, oh, no, shame it on wasn't, you. wasn't time. I, I did say that it was fun. I'm walking around in a t-shirt and it's winter down there and people are in these puffy winter coats and I'm like wearing a t-shirt going, this is beautiful <laughs> weather. What are you doing? <laughs> but um, yes. it, this is one of those, those I, I, I think there is some confusion and Microsoft needs to be careful. They just seem to be on a run of every little, every smaller product idea, feature idea they slap a new logo and brand on it. Yeah. And that's causing some confusion. It, oh, it, and some and it sometimes this is limited just to, for business. Yeah. <laughs> they yeah. rebrand it as another product and add for business. business. <laughs> like, or yeah. pro for business. <laughs>
part of our the question too about why not just put it under insights it's interesting when you look at their pricing structures they have insights glint and pulse under the analytics and feedback tier price yeah. together so there's a module that has all three so you have the potential for PII in any one of those three. So there's the need for, for certain pieces of data to be anonymous as it's disseminated down to people and very highly protected. So I kind of think of them as being cousins in a way they're related and they're doing similar things. But Christian, like you were saying, when to use what can be difficult, but it gives you the ability to pick the tool you need to do what you need to do. It's interesting when you start and go and talk about, you know, user scenarios around it. Like I was down, I was presenting on the topic of internal communications. So what it was, I was presenting on the topics of Viva Connections, Viva Engage, and Viva Amplify. And of course, I brought up, I said, uh, you know, Pulse kind of comes into that. I just mentioned it in passing. Um, insights briefly talked about those those things, but really for comms people, it's those three products. So you start going and looking at different scenarios. Like if you're going to talk HR, then HR would likely be, you know, they might talk about connections, engage, and glint rather than amplify. Yeah. Yeah. yeah there's there's a. I'll say that there's always the opportunities for MVPs to write more around this topic and help clarify some of the messaging. Um, it, it is always interesting to look at. I look at so, like a question like this and I said, well, there is room, there's opportunity for improve, sorry, opportunity yes. for improvement around Microsoft's messaging for this, so. <laughs> there's always that opportunity. <laughs> And it's Christian, you'll appreciate you this. You have to name everything Outlook. That, that's that's the rule of thumb. At some point, in time, Outlook Pro, whatever it is, yeah, has Outlook to be named Pro. Outlook. Yeah. Outlook uh, something, something Outlook. Outlook Pro business. Yes. Christian, you'll appreciate this. So, from the department uh, of you know dictionary definitions, we don't care about uh, at Microsoft. <laughs> uh, I'm looking up the definition of glint. Um, Anybody really look at the definition of Glint? Why they would call this product Glint? I try not Isn't to that... think about anything Microsoft names. Okay. Yeah. Isn't that something I, that you I did push the out same your thing. belly button a couple times a week? It is short pulses of light. No, wait, <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Didn't someone just say they called something Viva Pulse? Pulse? Isn't Pulse short pulses of light? So explain to me. Or, or energy. That could also just be energy, it, not necessarily light. It very well could, could be. be. It could be. Um, now, think about this. It's a, you, you brought this up, Joy. You said in the beginning, it's uh, when you talked about Glint, it's more organization. It's more enterprise. What does that yeah. got to do with small pulses of light? Okay, but you're also talking about the company <laughs> that just renamed Azure ID to Entra Identities. <laughs> Better to be flashed than mooned, old friend. It's actually Entra. So the yeah. Entra. 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 But we also have teams and teams for our teams <laughs> where we have groups. <laughs> where our group groups teams come together in teams and and sites and, and share. site collections and we share things. Yeah. This is why I don't go down the rabbit hole of names. Just don't go there. <laughs> Just can't. You'll you'll end up in a very padded cell. Oh, yeah. All you need to know is that there are a whole new series of cool Microsoft socks that they'll be giving away. <laughs> I did I did see, I did get the pop up on my phone for an announcement that Microsoft is putting out a brand new font. Have you read the new story about the new Microsoft font? Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. not Kalimri the important or whatever things. they call it anymore. Uh -huh. The important it's, things. That's right. Let them eat cake. That's what yeah. I say. And, and then it has to do with the live action emojis and teams. Yeah. There, there are not needs, important things to be fixed elsewhere. Let them all eat cake. Here's your <laughs> new font. And you'll like it. And we're going to call it product glint just because oh, we, we want cost to. you a bunch of lapel pins. It'll be a glint pulse font. It's a pulse yeah. of a glint. 
So well, let's... there's Glint Pulse and then Pulse Glint, two very different things. So why don't we just start <laughs> calling things letters? You know, that seems to be the thing to do nowadays. Is just change it to a let's call Glint. Let's call Viva B, and we'll call Windows C. Yeah, and we'll call Office F. And Microsoft will be just M. <laughs> Right. That makes too much sense. Sure. Not, not to be confused the with again. the golden the arches. <laughs> Different <laughs> font, Sherry. Different font. This is what you get for having something on a Friday afternoon, Kristen. <laughs> yep. <laughs> you did it to yourself. <laughs> I'm just switching to Comic Sans. I don't care what you <laughs> uh, Console us, baby. Console us. <laughs> Thank you.